What's up everybody? In today's video we're going to be reviewing the book Fortune's Formula by William Poundstone. And the subtitle for this book is The Untold Story of the Scientific Betting System That Beat the Casinos and Wall Street. This book says it's the editor's pick for number one nonfiction book of 2005 for Amazon.com. And it says Fortune's Formula, so you think it's about how to become rich. And it really is. Um, that's not why I chose this book, though. That's not why I chose to read this book. I was looking for books about information theory and Claude Shannon after I had read a book called Life After Google by George Gilder. And I read The Man Who Solved the Market. And both of them mentioned information theory and Claude Shannon more specifically and Ed Thorpe as well because Ed Thorpe is one of the most successful investors ever. He's not really popular, but in investing and betting, he's well known. And so what this book is about is about the secrets behind creating wealth and managing wealth. But it goes into a lot of different topics such as gambling, mafia, information theory, mathematics, different ways to manage a portfolio. But the main thing that this book is about is something called the Kelly Criterion, which is a formula for how to manage your wealth. And the book centers around that, but it weaves in and out of different topics, such as discussing Claude Shannon in the beginning and Ed Thorpe and how they got connected. And the reason it talks about Claude Shannon is because it talks about information theory and the law of large numbers and how the two relate to each other and how that relates to wealth. Because behind the Kelly criterion is that is that as long as you manage your capital and you don't go to zero, then you can use the law of large numbers to your advantage. So you need to assess how big your bets should be on each bet that you make. And that's how you should manage your money. And the reason it talks about gambling is because that's how Claude Shannon and Ed Thorpe got their start, is they got started gambling. Ed Thorpe wrote a famous book about blackjack called, I think it's called Beat the Dealer. And even now that book is still very popular, but it talks about gambling at the beginning and then it weaves into mathematics and the different formulas behind the Kelly Criterion, alternatives to the Kelly Criterion. And there's some really interesting concepts in here, but the Kelly Criterion really applies to when you have limited capital, or for example, like your, your capital doesn't keep growing. If you have a 401k or a salary job and you save money, this wouldn't necessarily apply to that. This more applies to somebody like a hedge fund manager. Or when you go gambling, you have, let's say, $100 or $1,000, and you don't want that to go to zero, and it's not going to be replenished. So that's how you would apply that. There's a lot of alternative formulas to that. But what I really liked about it was this concept of the Kelly criterion and how important it is. And this is the reason why all these financial advisors out there tell you to buy an S&P 500 fund that's low fee. Uh, because the thing with the S&P 500 fund is it's not going to go to zero. Because if the S&P 500 fund goes to zero, society is going to be destroyed. So that's why they tell you to do it. Because the Kelly Criterion teaches you that you don't want your money to go to zero. And as long as, and as, long as your money doesn't go to zero then you have the chance to grow your wealth infinitely or not infinitely or exponentially, but you can at least grow it over time. And you have a large chance of becoming wealthy just because of the large numbers. And so the S&P 500 fund is good because there's no chance of going to zero. Therefore, you can invest all of your money into it. But the Kelly Criterion wouldn't necessarily apply to a 401k fund because you're gonna keep putting money in there and it discusses that as well if you have, you know, if you have a place where, if you have a fund where you're going to keep replenishing it, then you should just be fully invested in something like an S&P fund and keep investing in there. But there's some very interesting concepts in here. For example, uh, if, if you're not sure how much money you should put in, you can keep 50% into a fund and 50% in cash. And every time the, the fund or stock that you thought would do well goes down you just buy it more with the cash 
you don't spend all of your cash, but you just spend it in portions and you buy more over time. And if the fund goes up instead of going down, then you sell some of it. And this would be a way to manage your wealth as well, because most people, what they do is they buy a stock, it goes up and they sell the whole thing. Well, there's under that method, you wouldn't sell the whole thing. You would only sell a portion. And then if it went down, you'd buy it back. And there's studies that show that this is a better way to manage money than just constantly buying and selling. And you hear that on all the financial advice shows and books as well. So that's why I like this book because it really proves to you, it really shows you the math behind all that, all the mathematicians that have developed all this, all the portfolio theorists. But above all of them, this book highlights the Kelly Criterion and the importance of it. And it's used by hedge fund managers to manage their funds. And in the book, The Man Who Solved the Market, they don't really talk too much about the formulas and stuff that they use. But you can tell after reading this book that all the formulas and all the portfolio management theories that are used by Robert Mercer in that book and The Man Who Solved the Market and Jim Simons all come from the mathematicians in this book. And if you read this, you'll have a lot better understanding of how to manage your money financially or if you're going to gamble as well. What I didn't like about this book is it goes a bunch of rabbit holes, talks about, like I said before, mafia goes into AT&T and gambling over wires, talks about Rudy Giuliani. It goes into a bunch of weird stories, but it always comes back to the Kelly Criterion. Sometimes it gets way too much into the mathematics and the formulas. That's why I ended up buying the paperback I first rented it as an audiobook, but I bought the paperback because there's way too many formulas in this book and I wanted to have the formulas. So sometimes it's really difficult uh, to read as you get bogged down in the formulas. If you're really interested in learning about the math behind managing your money, then this book is good for you. And it really shows you how to think about managing your money in the market. The Kelly Criterion would be important if you're buying individual stocks, like a hedge fund manager but it's not really gonna to apply to you if you're buying funds. And it'll make you feel more secure about managing your money if you're buying those large S&P 500 funds because if you sit there and think about it, those funds are not gonna to go to zero. And if they do, then society's in trouble. It's not just your portfolio. So it makes you feel more secure. But also if you buy an S&P 500, you're not gonna get as high as a return and your risk is gonna be lower. So that's something else to think about in there. But if you're thinking about that, then you need to think about the math involved as well. Uh, but maybe if, and another thing this book talks about is leverage. If you're more sure of a bet, then you can apply leverage to it. And the math around that is a little bit difficult. But if you think about it, if you're more sure of a bet in your portfolio, you can use leverage. You obviously don't want to get too risky, but if you're sure of a bet and it's not gonna go to zero and the fees aren't too high, then maybe you can use leverage. This book just really gets you in a mindset of drilling down on the math of your finances and how to manage them and maybe how to grow them faster. And especially now in 2020, as the market gets crazy and it's gone down crazy in 2020 when I'm doing this review, but it's also gone up crazy. And if you were anticipating that or you use some of these formulas to leverage up as the market was going down, then you could have gotten much wealthier faster. So that's just something to consider. And you can, you can check out a bunch of different portfolio theories in here and the math behind it. So I really recommend this book if you're interested in being financially independent or managing your own personal finances. And if you watch my channel, you know, I really like that topic. I like financial markets. I like personal finance. So to get more of that, Make sure to subscribe to this video and like this video to support me. Thanks for watching.